In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make poseable, movable metal from foam core and other basic supplies. I'm making a metallic trim on the character's robe, but you could use it to make some kind of fantastic weapon, or any other small-scale craft you can think of, or even if you wanted to stop motion to animate something. Greetings and welcome to the Dream Syndicate. If you want to join me in making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Now, let's get crafting. To make this bit of faux metal craft, we'll need some aluminum wire, a medical paper tape, Mod Podge, foam sheets, Fabri-Tac, metallic acrylic paint, ink, maybe some heavy stock paper like Bristol board or cardstock, and some tools for texturing. You can find the supplies I'm using below in the description and pinned comment. We'll start off with a length of 18 gauge aluminum wire. I'm basing the length of the wire on about how long I think the art doll's rope should be. We'll quickly twist it up with our pliers. Depending on what you're doing, or if it's visible, you might want to snip the uneven edge of the wire. Once that's done, we'll roll it a length of paper tape, and cut it to size. I like to cut it so it's about as wide as 3 to 4 times the thickness, and about as long as the wire. This part's tricky, but we're going to wrap the paper tape around lengthwise. Here I'm just making sure it's on tightly. We'll do that a couple more times. Then we'll soak both ends of it in some water for a little while, anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour on either side. Next we'll spread some Mod Podge heavily diluted with water across it. I did a couple of layers where I added in more and more silver paint off camera, and I also used progressively less and less water with each layer. This will help the silver pigment get absorbed into the paper tape. We'll measure a thin strip of this foam sheet, which is going to give us the segments of this sort of spinal shape. I like using foam because it's flexible, and you can easily texture and paint it. We'll make a thin strip, and then another little strip that will serve as a template for the other pieces we'll cut. We'll just trace it all down the length of the foam strip. If you use techniques you learned from any of my videos, I'd be happy to take a look. You can tag me on whatever social media platform you're posting to. You can find my links below. Speed, go! And then ludicrous speed, cut them out with our exacto. Here's a quick note on failure. I tried to use two-part resin epoxy and for whatever reason, it didn't seem to hold. I'm not sure if I messed up the timing on the set time or what, it just wasn't seeming to work at all. It might be that it just wasn't the right adhesive for the job. So instead, we'll use some of this old bottle of Fabri-Tac. I tried clothespins to hold the foam pieces on as I went, but didn't think they held the foam on snugly enough. I found a better solution by wrapping them with tiny scraps of wire that I had laying around. Being a bit of a pack rat for the win! Now we're just going to take a sharpened pencil and use it to indent into the surface, and score into it a bit with a pointy clay tool. You can experiment with all sorts of implements to create texture, but I also found that tiny files, needle files to be exact, give me some really interesting marks into the foam. Then we'll just go in with our silver acrylic paint onto our spinal form. One layer of metallic paint leaves a lot of the black of the foam showing through, which depending on what you're doing might be how you want it to look. You might consider using spray paint, but the propellant, what makes the paint shoot out of the can, tends to have a melting effect on a lot of foam-like surfaces. So that melting would either have to be a part of your design choice, or you'd have to seal your foam in some way. We'll do an ink wash with this transparent raw umber. Unless I want to detail it heavily accented, I tend to add a little water to the ink and even sometimes a tiny dab of dish soap. You can see how the ink wash is bringing up all the dents and scratches on the surface. After the ink's been on the surface for a minute or two, we'll wipe away the excess to make the details a little more subtle. Since I like the patina the ink was giving this, we'll go ahead and do another wash. Each layer is going to tint it just a bit darker. And again, wipe away. Another thing we can do is go back and put some ink inside some of the little holes and scratches to really bring them out. Here I'm using much more saturated ink and picking out individual details. Then we'll take some of that away. 
My sketch of Lord Bledwall had all these blade bits sticking out the sides of the metal trim, kind of like a spinal column. I had already gotten pretty far on this build, and should have put them in sooner. So it was a mental fight over risking messing up what I had already done, and really liked, and also my laziness didn't want to do any more work. Or I could make this a bit cooler by spending the time to add them on. It was a hard fought battle, but making it cooler won, so I cut bits of blade out of some bristle board, sliced tiny grooves that I could put the narrow ends of the blade into, and used resin epoxy both inside the grooves and thinly applied it to the narrow end of the blade. As a warning, pretty much everything in creativity is a conflict of good enough and saving some amount of hours of work versus putting in a bit more effort and making the thing cooler. Having made the thing sufficiently cooler, we'll attach the trim by sewing it on with a gray thread. We'll sew in from the back, make a loop, tie off our thread a few times, cut it, and repeat that process up the length of the trim. Here you can see what it looks like once it's all attached. Lord Bledwall is also going to have a bladed mantle that I'll do a making of video similar to this one if you want to see how that was made. When it's ready, it'll be the top video that you can click. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to join me in making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time, make believe.